Hey there, Papper people. I am super excited for this video for a couple of reasons. One, fantastic educational opportunity for all of us. And two, I do a lot of product reviews and reviews of stuff. And I almost always come across very negative because there's a lot of scams in the industry. I feel very protective of you guys. I like to expose scams and, and garbage products. So I finally have something here that I think I'm gonna be positive on overall. So for that, I'm excited. Hey, don't hate me for being negative on other uh, scammy items. Hate the scammy items and those who bring those to you. So today we have something here called Remedy. It's a remedy system for the treatment of central sleep apnea specifically. If you have obstructive sleep apnea, you can watch or not. This isn't gonna be for you, but it will have some educational things that you might be interested in. And I say this because I come across these all the time when I'm doing consultations with people. So let's take a look at this. Remedy, this is probably the most honest website I've ever seen in my life. I love it. It actually brings me hope and joy. Okay, so the Remedy system, this is actually very, very similar to Inspire. Now Inspire is an implant that is for the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. It works on the hypoglossal nerve. The Remedy system is an implant that works on the phrenic nerve. Now the phrenic nerve, because we're, I'm doubting we all know what the phrenic nerve is for, the phrenic nerve is what basically is a conduit to the brain to say, hey, you might wanna think about breathing right now. All right, so let's first all get on the same page. Central sleep apnea. And I love that they differentiate the two. So central sleep apnea, when the brain areas that control your breathing are not functioning correctly during sleep, I would say it's slightly different than that. I think they're trying to dumb it down. Uh, what it is, is your chemoreceptors are getting bad, well, I should say late information. So usually when people have um, problems with their heart, you can have atrial fibrillation or congestive heart failure, super common in people that have central sleep apnea, like true central sleep apnea. They're just getting a delayed signal. Um, so their breathing pattern is all screwed up and that's what central apneas are. Central apneas are when your throat or your airway is completely clear. There is no obstruction. There is no blockage in your airway at all. Everything's open. You're just not breathing. Now this is different from an obstructive sleep apnea. An obstructive sleep apnea is when you're trying to breathe, you're working real hard, but you got a clog in your throat. Let me show you. Anyone who has had a sleep study, and by the way, if you wanna get, if you feel like you have central sleep apnea, or you feel like you're misdiagnosed with central sleep apnea, Labs count central sleep apneas all the time that should not be counted. Many people have an arousal, they wake up, and then after that you have a natural central sleep apnea. If your lab's counting that, they're giving you artificially high central sleep apnea index, and you don't want that, that's, that's fictitious. So let me get on with this. In the lab you have two belts. You have a thoracic and you have an abdominal belt. Then you have a cannula in your nose for breathing. You can have this with a mask, or just a cannula when you're doing your baseline segment of the recording. So how do we tell if you have obstructive or central apnea or even mixed apnea? Well, we have breathing in here. When I inhale, it goes up, the line goes up. That's what the wave looks like, more or less. Breathing, when I'm breathing. Every inhalation is going up, exhalation down. Inhalation up, exhalation down. We have that for both of these belts. So if I'm breathing along normally and nothing's happening, all those waves are going up and down at the same rate. If I have central sleep apnea, all of those waves, my breathing and these are stopping. They all stop at the same time. I'm not even trying to breathe, therefore I'm not breathing. And obstructive apnea is when I'm breathing, but there's something up here, like I'm trying, I'm, I'm really fighting, but there's no breathing occurring up here. So you'll see the bottom two, the belts going like this, the top belt's completely flat because I'm essentially being choked. The remedy is gonna do absolutely nothing for obstructive sleep apnea. It can fire all day. It can tell your phrenic nerve, breathe, breathe, breathe. And it's like, yeah, yeah, no crap. I'm trying to breathe. There's something in the way. With central sleep apnea, it's very different. The remedy system is sitting there waiting. It's like, and it'll send the signal for you. So your natural systems aren't giving you the signal to breathe, but the remedy implant says, dude, you need to breathe. And so it sends a signal to the phrenic nerve telling you to breathe and you breathe. Now there's another way to treat this and that is by 
adaptive servo ventilation, otherwise known as ASV. It is a BiPAP machine. It's super sophisticated. So if someone has chain stokes respiration, which is that pattern of uh, not breathing and then over breathing and then not breathing and then over breathing, ASV is going to adapt to that. And during the periods where you're not breathing, it is going to kick in its non-invasive ventilatory uh, action and basically force you to breathe pretty much exactly like Remedy. But instead of having a mask on your face, you have an implant over here. Or is it here? People get so upset when I don't do it in the right spot. Maybe it's up here or down here. I'm just kidding, it's over here. Let's look at more. Uh, symptoms of central sleep apnea, chronic fatigue, excessive daytime sleepiness, brain fog, cognitive impairment, or inability to fall asleep or get restful sleep. The only one I would gripe with is this brain fog and cognitive impairment. That tends to be fragmentation from REM sleep. And with chain stokes respiration or central sleep apnea, here's the, the dirty little secret. Central sleep apnea usually goes away during REM sleep. Uh, central sleep apnea affects stage one, stage two, stage three, goes away during REM sleep. REM sleep highly associated with, with like I said, brain fog and concentration, memory concentration. Another high likelihood that you have central sleep apnea is you have, I just mentioned this earlier, cardiac disorders like congestive heart failure or atrial fibrillation. If you live at a high altitude, you have a really, really high chance of having central sleep apneas. My uncle really falls into this. Also use of opioids. My uncle does not use opioids. And then idiopathic central sleep apnea, meaning they don't know what is causing the central sleep apnea. You just have it. Now here's the important part, diagnosing central sleep apnea. How do you know if you have central sleep apnea or not? I, I touched on this before. Labs are really bad, some of them, at scoring central sleep apneas. They will see an arousal, and there's a post-arousal central in everyone, no matter what they're using, and often labs will score this. This should not be scored. It is not meant to be scored. It's a natural occurrence. You're hyperventilating when you wake up, and then that kills your respiratory drive. And so if you see a bunch of central sleep apneas in there um, that are kind of not at a really high level, you can be pretty sure they're probably fictitious on some level. So they're saying that you can have this tested with a home sleep apnea test only if it's a type two. Hey, by the way, AXG sleep diagnostics, we have those. Type two. If you're using a type three, they don't even know if you're awake or asleep. I would highly advise against trusting a central sleep apnea diagnosis that is done with a type three device. In fact, they even mention on those type threes, there's a disclaimer, this is not meant to diagnose central sleep apnea. You need to either have an in-lab study or a type two study. Again, axgsleepdiagnostics.com, that is my website. We do, in fact, test central sleep apneas. We score them appropriately, just a FYI. Now this is how the remedy system works. You have the implant on the right hand side, then you have a couple lead wires that are going down to the diaphragm to measure whether you are or are not breathing. And then you have innervation of the phrenic nerve. This is all gonna work in conjunction to get you breathing when you're having central sleep apneas. It's just providing that artificial burst of phrenic nerve activity when your body's not doing it for you. Now this is something I'm not 100% sure of. It looks like the Remedy system has a program that can tell you if it is or is not working. My guess is it's probably a better bet to have this tested again with another type two study or an in-lab study. Um, or if just your symptoms go away, you're probably good to go. If you're like, dude, I feel great. <laughs> probably not another need to get tested. It's probably working appropriately, but I don't know anything about their system. I've never seen or run a study on anyone with a Remedy implant. Conceptually, it sounds very solid in my opinion. Okay, let's take a look at this thing for clinicians, the study results. A lot of interesting stuff in here. I love this graphic. The one thing that kind of, it kind of concerns me is this baseline central apnea index. When someone has true central sleep apnea, it's typically a lot higher than that. That's kind of a low number, 23. Uh, the next graphic, I already looked through this, kind of displays exactly what I'm talking about. But if we just consider this for central sleep apnea, you're gonna see that it's actually pretty effective. Let me show you why. So these are, this is a one year, two year, three year, five year follow-up of someone or of people with an implant. So baseline being 23 central apnea events per hour, which is a central apnea index. 
And you can see here that one, two, three, five years after, they're having one central apnea per hour of sleep. Now, if we head down here and we look at an overall apnea hypopnea index, this is including all apneas, all hypopneas. So this includes obstructive apneas, central apneas, hypopneas, even mixed apneas. If you don't know what a mixed apnea is, a mixed apnea is an apnea that starts off as a central apnea, and then when the desire to breathing, when the desire to breathe comes back, it's an obstructive apnea. So even though they're not breathing because they don't want to breathe, all of a sudden when they decide they want to breathe, they can't breathe because of an obstruction in the airway. A lot of doctors will say, will, will confuse the two, mixed apneas and complex sleep apnea. Complex sleep apnea is when you have central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea. That's not mixed apnea. Mixed apnea is an actual type of an event. Okay, so back to this, apnea hypopnea index. You can see their baseline, we still have that same 23, but they also had 12 hypopneas. Then they had two obstructive apneas and they had one mixed apnea. Now see, this is why they're the, the smartest. <laughs> this is why these guys are good. Everything they're doing here is appropriate. Now this is something that I actually was, I just mentioned. If they're having nine hypopneas, that's an obstructive event. Three obstructive apneas, obviously an obstructive event. So they're actually counting those. So you can see here that if you have an obstructive com component to your sleep disordered breathing, look at this, it, it essentially does absolutely nothing for obstructive events. Yeah, sure, there's a slight decrease, but they're still plugging along. Right here, actually, obstructive apneas get worse. Um, I think these are all within the realm of uh, statistically insignificant increases, in my opinion. I know you're gonna get st statistics goobers that jump all over that. But basically, it, it's not really doing all that much. It's not changing all that much. Hypopneas, not really changing all that much. They're, they're still having nine per hour of sleep, eight per hour of sleep, five per hour of sleep, seven per hour of sleep. You know, we have like, basically, look, we have 12 events, including those, 10 events, 10 events, 10 events. All pretty much the same as, as far as obstructive apneas. But then we have the central apnea. So it doesn't do dick for obstructive apneas, but it does help for central apneas. And they are very honest about this in this graphic. I have no complaints. Now here is one more reason why the, the folks at Remedy are smart, and I appreciate this. This has nothing to do with anything other than my own personal gripe. Uh, they're calling REM sleep, REM sleep on its own, and they are referring to deep sleep as stages N2 and N3. And light sleep as N1. So if you have obstructive apneas, any form of it, you're looking in the wrong place. If you just have central apneas, this might be a very viable option for you. How do you know if it's a viable option for you? Well, if you just have central sleep apnea, and then it's up to you. Do you wanna try something like adaptive servo ventilation? Do you wanna wear a mask on your face and use a non-invasive ventilator like ASV? If you do, maybe you wanna try that first and avoid having an implant because having an implant, there's some problems with that. You're not ever gonna be able to have an MRI. Now, you may be like, whatever, don't want an MRI. Well, no one wants an MRI until they need an MRI. So at that point, you're kinda of screwed. So I'm always of the mindset, let's go with a non-surgical option first, but if you're failing ASV and it's become more of a pain in the butt than you're, ready, you're willing to deal with, maybe try the Remedy device. One more thought on that, if you are using an ASV and you feel like it's not working, you really, really need to look at your leak rate. An ASV device is not gonna respond appropriately to your breathing if you have a really high leak. So download Oscar, sleepfiles.com forward slash Oscar and check the trend window of the leak. Don't look at the individual number, that's worthless. Look at the trend throughout the night and see if you can make sense of that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Sign up with me for a PAP therapy analysis at axgsleepdiagnostics.com. I'm happy to go over this with you. Uh, we can see what's going on and, and maybe, if, maybe Remedy is a better option for you. And one more thing, if you decide that you wanna give ASV a shot for treatment of your central sleep apnea or chain stokes respiration, maybe check out the sponsor of this video and this channel, that is cpapsupplies.com. They have ASVs for you. They have tons of mask options for you. If you want to buy all this stuff, you can use cash. 
you can use your HSA, you can use your FSA. If you don't have a prescription, they have an RX service. Well, they will contact your doctor on your behalf and get a prescription for you. They also have some generous coupon codes, one of those being Lefty20. Use that in the discount section and you'll get 20% off whatever it is that you purchase. Please help me out and support the sponsor of this channel, CPAPsupplies.com. They are helping to bring all this information to you free of charge. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this answered some questions. I'm sure I left something out. This was a lot of information to go over. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Check out the description box for ways you can help this channel out. And if you're looking for a little fun, a little way to, un to relax and unwind, check out my other channel. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Have a great night. We'll see you next time. Why does your mask smell like my feet? Pick up some Mask Bright today. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swearingen, Chung Chu Chen, and Edward Steiner, as well as a big thank you to all my other Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Little tiny thanks, buddy, for you guys.